I'm David Elder. I'm a husband, a father, a home cook, and a food fanatic. That is amazing. Woo! I wasn't born in Texas, but I got here as soon as I could. Texas food is diverse, full of both history and culture. Join me as I travel to farms and restaurants, sharing recipes from friends across the Lone Star State. New Braunfels, Texas, home of the Schlitterbahn Water Park, the world famous Worst Fest, and me. I grew up here. New Braunfels is a great place to raise a family. In fact, in the last decade, this small town's population has almost doubled. New Braunfels was founded on the banks of the Guadalupe River. Prince Carl of Psalms Braunfels, both a German prince and military officer, founded the city in 1845. He named it New Braunfels to honor his hometown back in Germany. The Guadalupe River offers a variety of activities throughout the whole year, including fishing, tubing, and hiking. Today's show is all about German food, so we're gonna travel around New Braunfels, exploring the sights and having some bites, because this is how Texas eats. Our first stop is at the oldest bakery in Texas, where they're serving up some freshly baked German pastries. Let's go inside Naglin's Bakery. has a ton of delicious items available, but one of the treats the bakery's known for is their classic cherry strudel. It's a very traditional German treat, and they're making it right here at Nagelin's, and they have different options over here, but I'm told this is the one. I'm gonna try a bite here. That's really good. Good call. Huge chunks of cherries on the inside, icing covering all over the top, and the texture of the pastry itself Nice, light, and flaky, but it's dense. I mean, this thing is packed full of cherry goodness. This is really good. How long has Naglin's been open? 152 years this year. Wow. That's a long time to be around making good, so. How long have you been a part of this business? My family came here in 1980. I started at the bottom, Mr. Naglin himself, he showed me everything. When it comes to all the items that you have here, what are some of the most popular ones that people come in for? We're mostly known for really our apple strudel and our smiley face cookies. Smiley face cookies are a tradition for kids growing up in the area. Handmade from scratch every day, they've been delighting people for years. Red roll popper here, hamburger buns. We sell a lot of stores around town. We saw you making tortillas back then. We probably started that about 20 years ago. If you like Tex-Mex and you're eating in South Texas, you're likely going to run into a Naglin's tortilla. Would you say that it's just as busy now as it was in the morning, or is there like a point in the day where finally people have gotten their Naglin's fix? That's <laughs> funny you say that, because you know, usually at 9 o'clock in the morning is our business time in the mornings. You know, we close at 5.30, and then we'll come here till the door closes, and they'll be banging on the door. <laughs> come in and get some more, you know. These cinnamon buns will knock your socks off. Look at all those pecans, my goodness. And look at all that maple icing, mm-mm-mm. Naglin's isn't just for breakfast. They offer treats that are delicious all day long. It really, it's an all-day thing. People come after school and they're bringing their kids over here. If they didn't come in the morning, too, they'll still come in the afternoon. <laughs> Just kept this bakery alive so long. We use the best ingredients that we can get. I don't buy nothing cheap. It costs me more, but it's worth it because people are going to tell when they taste it. You know, you got to have good product. These pastries are called butterfly rolls, and once she's done making them, you know I got to give it a try. is like a really soft, soft, soft marshmallow texture almost to it. And then you have all those pecans that are crushed on top. So it's this really nice nuttiness that finishes with it. But then inside of the actual bread itself, you can taste there's a lot of butter going on in there. It is the, the ultimate treat. A feeling this is going to be my favorite pastry so far. This is the ultimate sticky bun with maple icing on top of it. Here we go, ready for takeoff. Oh my lord! Oh, 
Y'all just make this one. This, this, this is the one right here. Woo! Oh, that is delicious. Oh my gosh. The maple icing is perfect, but then when you get into the middle of it, it's gooey. It's perfect on the texture of the actual sweet bread. Oh, the cinnamon sugar. I'm gonna keep this to myself. You're gonna wanna sit in a nice, comfortable corner, put something fun on television, just forget about the world and take a bite of this thing. My goodness. Woo! Ross decided to show off his skills in the kitchen by making a batch of these delightfully sweet pretzels. This is the sweet pretzel. We saw it getting made. But here we go, I'm gonna break right into it. It has that puff pastry dough, right? This one's fun because the texture on it is so different from everything else, right? Because you have that puff pastry versus the other kinds of sweet bread, but the sweetness is more subtle. This one, you can eat the whole thing and it'll taste delicious and you won't feel as guilty. I <laughs> this would go great with a cup of coffee. What would you say if you had to pick your one favorite item? You were like, okay, I'll eat that today. I think a cheese pocket is pretty good right. too. A cheese pocket. cheese pocket? What is a cheese pocket? It's, 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 it's exactly a Danish dough too, and it's just got cream cheese in the middle, and it folds oh, on top over. Oh, Those are on. good. It's okay. got glaze on top too. We have a broad, and we have a regular sausage, and we have a jalapeno and cheese sausage, and a little, like a little breakfast uh, brown and serve link. This is the bratwurst kolache that they're using on here. They're using the sweet bread, and then the savory bratwurst in the middle. Great seasoning inside the actual bratwurst itself. You have that white cheese inside there, melted really nicely. It's the perfect bite every time, and it's all gone. Yeah. <laughs> Naglin's Bakery is absolutely delicious, but now we go from sweet to savory. After you get your fill of desserts from Naglin's Bakery, you take a stroll down Seguin Avenue, and you end up at Alpine Haas, where they're serving up traditional German food. So let's go inside the kitchen and see what they're cooking up. The Alpine Haas is serving up scratch-made favorites, like the iconic German dish, the schnitzel. We're gonna be using a veal cut, as you see right here, and then we're gonna pound it out to make it a little more tender, help it cook a little bit on the grill. Pound it out nice and even. Just mash it out. How much mashing or widening do you do on the meat? Thinner, the better. So we pound it out really thin, just to make sure it's tender enough to cook all the way through, cook evenly, and give you a nice tender bite. And we'll take it, we'll bread it in flour, hit it with the egg wash, lightly bread it with breadcrumbs. All the flavorings of the schnitzel will happen on the grill. That's what our breaded veal schnitzel looks like. All of our schnitzels are at least five ounces. Next steps, throw it on the grill, we're ready to go. <laughs> And then we have our spetzle noodles that we're gonna put on here, fresh pressed every day. Now talk to me about these noodles. What, what makes them special or, or unique? Our boss brought the recipe back with him from Germany. And we have to use a special press to press them that is only available in Germany. That's the first thing we do in the morning. Yeah. Get our potatoes ready and press our noodles That's for cool. the day. You press it, boil it, and then you put it on over here on the flat top. Right. That's cool. The veal schnitzel will usually take about maybe a minute on each side. The Jaeger schnitzel comes with mushrooms and gravy, so we can throw the mushrooms down here on the grill as well. And we're gonna add a little pepper and a little bit of peanut oil to saute those up nice and right. When it hits the grill like that, it just like awakens and hits you right in the face. It does. Right when it hits the flat top, starts sizzling. The people come for the schnitzel, that's our main draw. Now we're gonna flip that bad boy over. <laughs> oh my goodness. Add a little salt to it. Why not, right? Why not? That. Oh, that looks good. Mix these mushrooms around a little bit. When he flipped the schnitzel over, oh my gosh, it was golden brown, cooked to perfection. And you can actually see all the textures in there. A little bit of salt put on top, man. That's, it just sets it off perfectly with the mushrooms right there as well. All the smells coming off the grill, incredible. Now I'm gonna take those mushrooms. You're not really cooking those, you're just giving kind of a texture over there? Yeah, giving them a little bit of a different texture from your regular noodle, but it makes it pair so well with the gravy that we're gonna top it with. We'll usually serve it with our spetzle noodles, which are also made in-house every day. Squeeze those, boil them, and then those go on the grill along with your schnitzel, so they'll get a nice little crisp, nice little texture to them. We're gonna start with our spetzel first. Throw some gravy on it. Right off the grill, you gotta add on the gravy. You gotta add on the gravy, that's the good stuff. This is called a roulotten gravy. The stock that we use to make this gravy is actually made from a beef dish that we cook. This is something else. And then oh we splatter that gravy on there. Ooh. 
That's good eating. And that's done right there. Yes, sir, that's it. It looks delicious. It looks incredible. It's like I'm holding it right now. <laughs> Got all the gravy on top. Got everything assembled. It looks beautiful. It's ready to eat, right? It's ready. It's so tender. My goodness. My goodness. That is amazing. It's definitely a crowd pleaser. The texture you got on the outside of that so quickly, the breadcrumbs are essential to creating that texture. That is really, really good. And the gravy, though, the gravy and the mushrooms, that sells the dish. Woo! We take pride in our gravies. That first bite of schnitzel, my gosh, it's love at first bite with this dish. And then you get all that gravy on top. It's a little salty. It's a little savory. It's like so unctuous. It's the best flavor combinations you can think of. All put on top. It's like the best gravy you're ever going to have, right? That's a fun texture on those. That's unique, I've never had that before. That's what makes it special. And you're taking a little bit of bite of those noodles, the textures, everything plays well together. And then the mushrooms on there as well. You can't beat it, hands down, one of the best German dishes I've ever had. The gravy though, <laughs> you're gonna put that gravy in a cup and you don't wanna take it home with you. This is a home run, man. I'm gonna get schnitzel all the time with that gravy on there. This place is delicious. We appreciate it. A lot of people are happy that we're here providing the food that they grew up eating. Some of the dishes that we do have, you're not gonna see on some of the other German menus. I mean, I grew up eating this menu when I was a kid. The schnitzel out here at Alpine Haas is one of the best that you can get up here in New Braunfels. Absolutely delicious. And coming up later on the show, we're gonna go inside the New Braunfels Smokehouse Production Facility. We're gonna get a tour of how they make all their delicious German food, and we're gonna head to the restaurant. And next on Texas Eats, we go shopping at HEB to get ingredients to make a traditional German beer cheese sauce with a Texas twist. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to the show. We're here in New Braunfels, Texas at the HEB Plus to show you guys how to make a really easy German beer cheese dip. It's a great appetizer for a big game. We're gonna show you where everything's at, plus we're gonna have a running tally so you know how much this is gonna cost you. This recipe calls for a soft cheese, either a camembert cheese or a brie cheese. And actually, HEB has this brie cheese. though has a nice creamy flavor to it but we have to add some sharpness to help round out that flavor so actually if we just back on up check this out there's some artisan aged cheddar cheese that's right here from HEB this is going to give you that sharp flavor you want to help balance out that creamy goodness from the brie cheese This recipe calls for an acidic bite, and to do that, we're gonna be getting some onions, but it's H-E-B, so you know they have it ready to go for you. Check this out, they have white onions, sweet onions, they also have a savory vegetable mix. For this recipe, all we need is the one and a half cups right here of already diced white onions, ready to go. To help give this cheese sauce some good body, we're gonna need two ingredients. We're gonna need some unsalted cream butter, and you can see this one right here, and we're also gonna need some cream cheese. H-E-B makes a great product for that as well. And they have it right here, eight ounces of cream cheese. We're ready to go. On to the seasonings. Seasonings, okay, I think we're this way. Here we go. This recipe doesn't call for a lot of seasoning because a lot of the flavors are gonna come from the beer and the cheese, but all you need is gonna give it some color and a nice little pop of flavor. Paprika, there you go. Snake, it would have bit me. <laughs> okay. 
Look at that, $2 off these pretzels right here. This is what you need to eat this dip. And this pack of Super Pretzel Soft Pretzels comes with 15 fully baked pretzels. Perfect for a party, especially if you're serving up some German appetizers and you need some good pretzels that are easy to make. If you don't have beer with your beer cheese, well then it's probably just cheese, right? So you gotta get the beer, and we have the perfect beer for this recipe right here. It's called El Jefe. It's from the No Label Brewing Company right here in the great state of Texas, and it's a Hefeweizen style beer, which is a German wheat beer, and it's gonna go great with this recipe. And now, it's time to check out. the beer. There we go. Hi, Madison. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing great. Good. Oh, actually, I have a coupon. Yeah. <laughs> Got a coupon. Okay, $31.92. Oh, right. And y'all saved $2. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Now we have all the ingredients we need to make our German beer cheese sauce. And coming up later on the show, we're going to be going to the Culinary Institute of America, where I'm going to be showing you how to make this sauce using all of these ingredients. And coming up next, we're going inside of a production facility located right here in New Braunfels that's making beef jerky, sauce, and all kinds of things. So stick around, Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome to the new Bromful Smokehouse. When you think of New Braunfels, well, you think of sausage, right? Wars Fest, the 10 day salute to sausage. So, what better place to come up here than New Braunfels Smokehouse? We're gonna go inside the production facility, see how they're making all their sausage, talk to Derek, and get a full tour. I got my boots on, let's go inside. All right, so this is the official hairnet, but not really a hairnet, right? Because it's got a beard going, so it's like a beard <laughs> hairnet. And I think it goes on, it's like this here. Before you get to go inside the New Braunfels Smokehouse production facility, you gotta dress the part. And for me, that means covering up my beard and my hair. I have never put this on before, so I had no idea how to do it. So Christine had to come over and bail me out. Oh. Yeah. I was gonna say, it looked like I got tunnel vision for a little bit there. Cool. There you go. I'm ready. The hat. Oh, oh. <laughs> Gotta find my ears. There we go. I'm ready to go. We're inside of the facility, about to do the tour here at New Braunfels Smokehouse. With me right now is General Manager Derek Contreras, and he's gonna be showing us how all of this works in here. He's gonna give us the full tour, right? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, we're gonna put you to work. I'm excited. Let's do it. How'd you get that knife? Did we get to eat anything along the tour? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> but you can definitely buy some. <laughs> That's okay. All right. All right, we're going into our production facility. It's where the magic happens. Oh, it smells amazing in here. <laughs> you can inhale that, that smells really good. So what are we smelling right now? Well, you're smelling our delicious hickory smoked meats. Right here, we have our boneless hams, we have our bone-in hams, uh, we have turkeys, and we have our chickens hanging right behind you. All right, so everything looks delicious, it smells great, but where's the sausage made? Well, I'm gonna take you over there right now. Let's go. Let's do it. So I know that they make sausage out here, but I had no idea that they're making hams, pork, chickens, and all, I mean, the turkeys are huge. Immediately when you walk in here, that pepper smell, it hits you in the face, right? It's abundant in this room. So what are we looking at? So those are our pork chops uh, that we've already peppered and they're about to go into our smoker. So these aren't smoked yet? Not yet, but they will be soon. We saw turkey, ham, chicken. Now we see pork here, but where are the sausages made? Well, let's go. Let's go. I keep everything hidden. Right when you walk into the facility, the pepper just punches you right in the nose. I mean, the flavor, it hits you like a freight train. It is awesome. So this is what I've been waiting for, man. This is where the sausage is being made. Now talk to me a little bit about the process. What goes into making the sausages? Well, we have our grinder and our mix grinder that we blend our special ingredients and our whole muscles. And then we go straight into our stuffer. As you can see, they're clipping it right now. That makes our famous ring bismarckian. So once it's on the bar, where does it go? Take it straight to the smoker. Let's go check it out. Follow me. There is so much more going on here than I ever thought was actually happening. I mean, it's in a historic neighborhood, and you go in and it's this huge facility. So what is this? This is our hickory. We've been smoking with this for the last 75 years, and it's the key to our success. 75 years. 
God, you could smell it. They have pork tenderloin in there. Those are big strips, but when it smokes, does it dramatically lose size? Yeah, absolutely. So what we have is called a yield percentage, and so we have to calculate what it's the shrinkage is per muscle. When this is done smoking, about how big will this actually be? Well, it'll turn into about eight inches uh, worth of meat, which will probably be around one pound each. Those smokers are huge. They fit nine racks of the sausage, but who knows how much else they can fit inside of those things. This sausage goes in there four to five hours, and then it's done. But you guys actually have a lot of sausage that's already smoked, right? Yeah, so it's in our RTE room. Let's go check it out. Let's go. All right, Derek, so this is a pretty busy room in here, right? There's a lot of stuff going on, but especially the sausage, right? It's getting packaged up and ready to send out. Yeah, so what we do is we take our sausage, we individually pack it, or we can bulk pack it, and we send it through all 50 states. Uh, besides Texas, New York, and uh, California are one of our biggest customers. New York and California, is there a particular flavor that's really popular? Uh, they like our original, they like our spicy. Oh, spicy. Of course they like the spicy. Derek, this has been a great tour. Thank you so much for giving us insight into how this all works, how this is operated, because I didn't know there's just this much work that goes into making sausage, but you guys are doing an excellent job over here. I love the product. And actually, we're going to be visiting your restaurant coming up here in a little bit. Y'all are welcome anytime. Glad to have you. Thank you so much. The New Braunfels Smokehouse has been producing great products for 75 years. And coming up later in the show, we're going to be traveling to the restaurant where I get to try some of it out. And next on Texas Eats, we go inside of a German restaurant serving up a killer Reuben sandwich. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Can I take that box of cheese on? Absolutely not. <laughs> Welcome to New Braunfels Smokehouse. Nailed it. That was it. here in New Braunfels, Texas, inside Krause's Cafe, a very traditional German restaurant to eat a not-so-traditional German item, the Reuben Sandwich. The Reuben Sandwich is said to have been created by a German deli owner in New York City. The legend goes that he made this sandwich for a famished actress. There are different stories about how the Reuben Sandwich was created, but who cares? The sandwich is absolutely delicious. So, Jeremy, when you're making the Reuben Sandwich out here, which is not a traditional German item, right? Like, what's the first thing you make? Well, we have bakers that come in every day and bake our bread fresh daily. But most importantly, the foundation for the Reuben is our rye bread. All right, so after the bread is baked, it's ready to go, you gotta make the meat, right? Sure. So what's the process of making the meat? Corning the brisket is something that we, we do every day. Then we slow roast it for about 12 hours. Now when it comes time to season the meat for the pickling process, what kind of seasonings do you use? Our house made pickling spice actually has red chilies in it gives it the big, bold flavor of the final product of our corned beef. Is anybody else doing that around here? Or? No, not that I know of. You have your bread, mm -hmm. you make fresh daily, you have the meat that you guys cook low and slow, and you have it ready to go. Mm -hmm. What's the next step to actually making the sandwich? We start by heating the corned beef on the grill, and then we layer everything together. Sauerkraut right on top of that, a little bit of Swiss cheese underneath, a little bit of Swiss cheese above it, then we toast that bread on the grill. That cheese is really important, right? For a Reuben sandwich, you have to have the Swiss cheese that's on there. Gotta have baby Swiss. And this sandwich, I mean, it's kind of diverse. I mean, using Swiss cheese, mm -hmm. right? Using sauerkraut, which kind of feels more like in the German realm, but then mm -hmm. everything else, it's kind of this like diverse sandwich that's pulling things from all different cultures. So why don't you leave the meat on there very long? If you leave it on there too long and it dries out, it might get a little tough, so you don't want that. That's a teachable moment. The origins of the Reuben sandwich really come from New York City and those delis there. But we've put our own German spin on it. All right, so now the sandwich is coming off the flat top, bread's toasted, cheese is a little melty, everything looks fantastic. Is there a special way you guys cut it? We cut it diagonally and we don't use a chef knife. We don't want to smash this sandwich. We want a serrated blade to really do the work, get through that sandwich nice and smooth, and then we can plate it just like you see here. And then when it comes out, I mean, you have the sauce, you have a pickle, and you have a special kind of chip that comes out with it as well, right? That's right. That's our house-made kartoffel chips, uh, made out of fresh potatoes. And then, of course, we've got our Thousand Island right on the side. That is also a recipe we make in-house. We put a lot of love into that recipe. 
can't take a bite of a Reuben sandwich in a German restaurant without pouring up some German beers. Cheers. Here we are. Oh, these look fantastic. From start to finish, this sandwich is such a cool process. It really is. There's a lot of heart and soul in the process. Before we take a bite, though, uh -huh. how long has the actual cafe been open? You know, we reopened Krause's three years ago, and originally it opened in 1938. Since then, it's moved to this location. However, it's been a New Braunfels staple since then. The Krause family, they ran it for three different generations, and we're super happy to honor them by being here today. grinding and pickling on the meat here. I and mean, it just packs so much salty goodness flavor in there. It makes it super tender. And then you match that with the acidity from the sauerkraut, the crunch from the toast on the outside of the fresh rye bread, and that little bit of Swiss cheese that's on there. This thing's a home run, man. It's so good. You don't even need the sauce. That's why we put it on the side. From the chips to the sandwich to everything else you guys have on the menu, a lot of this is homemade and you can really tell. Just a great environment and delicious food. Jeremy, thank you so much for having us out here. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we head to the Culinary Institute of America to cook up a German beer cheese dip. And next, we take a trip to the New Braunfels Smokehouse restaurant to dine on some delicious food. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. to Texas Eats. Earlier in the show, I got to go inside the New Braunfels Smokehouse production facility where they make sausage, beef jerky, and a whole lot of other smoked goods. And now it's time to go inside their restaurant to see what's on the menu. We're gonna go inside the restaurant that's been in New Braunfels for 75 years. They have a lot of old classics on the menu, and we're also gonna be trying some new stuff. Let's go check it out. The chicken and dumplings have been on the menu out here for 75 years since the place opened. Got to get some dumpling. That's the secret. It has to be all one bite. There we go. Ooh. Those dumplings are so tender. And they've been sitting in that broth. So they've absorbed all that salty goodness from the broth. Incredible. And the chicken, absolutely tender as well. Seasoned perfectly. Mm. That's comfort food. You come here, if you're feeling down or if it's a cold day outside, it's gonna warm you up and make you feel 100. This is incredible. I get it. I'm gonna eat this whole thing. I'm gonna eat it all. Mm. Mm. You gotta try a bite. <laughs> I'll save you some. After just one bite of the chicken and dumplings out here, you'll find out why everybody loves it. Absolutely classic dish. It's prepared wonderfully. It tastes like old time, good country, home comfort food. It's just goodness. It tastes like home. This right here is the Texas barbecue burger. You got a burger patty, some brisket. You have all that wonderful sauce on there. You got some cheddar cheese. I'm gonna add these onions and pickles on there. I love that with barbecue. That acidity cutting through, it's gonna give it that extra level of flavor. And these buns right here as well, they're made right in New Braunfels at Naglin's. Check that out. Everything made here in the city. The Texas barbecue burger. Take a bite. <laughs> oh my goodness. The barbecue in the sandwich is smoky, it's tender, packed full of fatty good flavors in there. A little bit of sauce on there, it really helps get some of that vinegar going in there as well. Cuts through that fat. The burger is cooked perfectly on that grill. You can tell it has some of that nice texture on there as well. And a really good flavor to it. It's seasoned lightly, so it's not overpowering the burger. It really adds a good complement to the barbecue. And then you have the sauce and then the cheese and the bacon that's on this. You have the pickles, the onions, and the freshly baked bread from Nanglins. This is a home run sandwich. You will get this for lunch and never want anything else again. You will come back consistently to get this. This tastes like Texas. Mm. That is really good. Good job, y'all. A 
new item on the menu. Check this out. This is the brat dog. Comes with sauerkraut on top, and then the bratwurst with the naglins bun, and then it has the brat beans on the side. I'm excited to try them out. Ooh, and first, when you pick it up, that naglins bun is so soft. It's nice and toasted. Take a bite. Instantly, when you take the bite, the bratwurst itself, nice and sweet, and then you have that sauerkraut on top. It's a little creamy, and it also has a really good acidity to it, so it's cutting through all those sweet flavors and giving you a well-balanced bite. And then the actual bun itself, super soft, but it's lightly toasted on the outside, so it's a great texture, soft in the middle. It's a home run. This is really good. You can eat probably two of these things, but I wish I could. Nothing goes better with the brat dog than some delicious brat beans. This is, their beans are making in-house, a new item, and it comes with the bratwurst in there as well. So you're getting chunks of the bratwurst served up with the beans. Look at that. The beans are the perfect complement to the brat dog. They're peppery, they're salty. The overall flavor in the beans is like kind of slightly spicy. Spicy in the sense of spices, not like gonna burn your mouth spice. Really good complement though to the brat dog, which is actually kind of sweet. So it's kind of like a play on salty and a little spicy and then a little sweet over here. Very good. All the food out here at New Braunfels Smokehouse is a home run. Everything's made fresh here in town, including all the buns that are made by Naglins, and it just gives you a whole other appreciation for all this deliciousness. Coming up next, I'm gonna show you how to make a German beer cheese dip recipe. It's guaranteed to be a hit at your next party. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Ooh, even the fries are awesome. My goodness. Welcome back to Texas Eats. We're here at the historic Pearl Brewery and we're gonna be going inside the Culinary Institute of America. Where I'm gonna show you how to make a German beer cheese dip recipe and how you're gonna serve it up some tasty warm pretzels. First things first, we're gonna get our cheese. We have our brie, aged cheddar, butter, and cream cheese. I'm gonna cut these into big old portions because we're gonna throw these all into a food processor. Once you have your cheese cut up and your butter and your cream cheese is ready to go, it's time to go in the food processor. This is gonna help make everything an even, consistent texture, because then it's gonna go onto the stove to melt down. So this recipe is actually a little salty, it's a little creamy, and traditionally, it's not spicy at all. But this is Texas, baby, so you know I gotta spice it up. A Little bit of salt, a little bit of fresh cracked pepper, a little bit of paprika, now this is something that's not traditional for the German beer cheese recipe that you would find at Oktoberfest. I'm actually gonna use some garlic powder in here because we gotta make it Texas, baby. This is Texas Eats. We're kicking it up with some cayenne pepper. German beer cheese dip is actually a common item that you're gonna find when you visit Oktoberfest in Germany, which actually takes place more in September than October, but it's delicious and it's really easy to make. We're gonna put these frozen pretzels in the oven at 400 degrees for four minutes. We have our saucepan ready to go on a medium heat. We're gonna put our items from the food processor into the pan. There we go. The particular saucepan that I'm using has a non-stick surface, and I'm using a silicone spatula as well. And we're just gonna keep stirring until all of this gets nice and melty. It smells so good already. It's the onions, the garlic, the paprika, that brie and cheddar cheese, everything just together is an incredible smell. That is melting nicely. Right before this is finished melting, you wanna open up your German wheat beer. In our case, it's a Hefeweizen. And we're gonna pour just a splash on there. You'll see it foam up right on top. You don't want too much beer in there. You're gonna cook out the alcohol, but you wanna keep the flavor. All right, these bad boys are ready. Time to pull them out and salt them up. From 
the stove top. We come over here, we have a presentation set up of all of our pretzels around a bowl. We're gonna pour our beer cheese right into the bowl. You have your beer cheese, your pretzels on the side. You got your beer still ready to drink and you're ready to dip. You can find this recipe online at ksat.com slash Texas Eats. Now it's time to eat. That's really good. <laughs> Nice onion flavor to it. The cayenne really kicks it up. That's delicious. Coming up next, we're gonna take a tour around the Pearl Farmer's Market, so don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. To Texas Eats. I'm here at the historic Pearl Brewery at the Pearl Farmers Market. Happens every weekend with vendors showing up from all across South Texas. These vendors are serving up all different kinds of delicious food and drinks, but today I'm going to introduce you to a vendor who's serving customers delicious cuts of pork from an old style breed of pig. This is Kelly Escobedo. She's one of the owners out here. So what makes your pigs different than other pigs on other farms? So we raise English large black cross for the tamar. They forage for their own feed. They have long floppy ears, uh, longer bodies, longer snouts. This is uh, a lot different from the modern domestic pig, right? What that does is two things. Number one, the meat is darker and richer in color and flavor, but also it's healthier. It's healthier for us and it's, it's healthier fat. It's healthier for the environment. Um, and it just produces a tasty, tasty product. Great for schnitzel. That's a very important part. Because these are an old style pig, you can see the tenderloin is much different than what you're used to seeing. It's a smaller, longer, piece of meat. Really, this is the healthy pork, right? That redness is coming from the grasses and the nutrients they're getting off of those grasses, and that produces a lovely flavor. These are pork chops. This is a double cut or inch and a half. You get this nice, lovely fat cap. Again, fat is not your enemy. Fat is your friend, especially when it comes to schnitzel. You want a nice little fat in that shoulder. And some nice, beautiful spare ribs. Oh, look at that. Look at how beautiful Ooh. those are. Even the shape of the pork ribs, right? This is a different style body shape, so it's a longer, flatter um, rib cage, right? We graze our animals for about two and a half years on grass before we bring them to market. That is about three to four times what the commercial environment does, right? Slow food brings you good flavor. Everything about this is just really cool, and I love the fact that all of this, there's a reason why it is the way it right, is. absolutely. And these are all thick cuts, and so South Texas Heritage, just here at the Farmer's Market, are where for people find For now, farming. we are actually opening a butcher shop. It's gonna be called the Farmer's Butcher, and it's 1602 East Houston. Uh, that butcher shop is opening in the next two to three months, and that will feature a lot of local farms, but more specifically, our product. And if people wanna find you online, anything like that? SouthTexasHeritagePork.com. Very cool. SouthTexasHeritagePork.com is your information place to get all the goodies and all the things you want to get to know right. where they're going to be at. And of course, follow them on social media as well. But this looks absolutely delicious. Awesome. And great for making schnitzels and all kinds absolutely. of delicious things. I'm going to take all this to go. Awesome. Thank you for joining me on this journey across New Braunfels. And a big shout out to HEV, the Culinary Institute of America, and the Historic Grill Brewery. And we'll see you next time on Texas Eats. It's time to go make some schnitzel.